What's going on, Giants fans? Hit Squad back at it with another episode of the Giant Breakdown. And you guys already know we have the Hawks Nest 206 podcast here with us. You guys remember them from last year when we played the Seahawks. Things didn't go too well last year. They did <laughs> not. Uh, but we're hoping that they get better this year. Listen, it's always a good time having you all, man. Appreciate you stopping by. How's everything been with you? It's been it's been great, you know. It's been a it's been a little up and down year, but you know, it's been it's been good as a as a Seahawks fan so far. A lot of uh, positives to build on. I, I I wish I could say the same, you know. But hopefully, if the Giants can pull off this win, you know, I'll be there with you, saying that there's a lot of positives that we can go off of. But uh, <laughs> you know, you guys can find the Hawks Nest Two Hundred Six Podcast uh, YouTube as well as a link to their X. I formerly known as Twitter uh, profiles in the description box below. And as always, join the hit squad. And uh, yeah, let's get right into this video. Listen, I thought you guys had a very good draft. Uh, you guys got some two key players, in my opinion, that I think will help shape uh, Seattle's future going forward. But even right now, I think that they are players that can provide a lot of quality. Uh, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba is a player that a lot of Giants fans wanted. You know, Witherspoon, I think, in my honest opinion, you know, was one of the better, if not top three, I would say, corners in this draft class uh, with Christian Gonzalez and Deontay Banks in that uh, conversation as well. Um, I got to ask you, though, with how the season's been going for you, how are the rookies looking? How are you feeling about this team going uh, into New York for you guys? Uh, and just, yeah, how's everything going with Seattle? Uh, yeah, I, you know, Seattle last year, you know, uh, got a, well, they got an award this year for last year's draft. Who we talked about last year was phenomenal. They won an award for best draft in the NFL. Um, and this year, you know, they drafted extremely well, came out with, you know, like you said, arguably one of the best corners and one of the best wide receivers in the draft. Um, now we got a little delayed to see Devon Witherspoon. He got hurt, um, missed all of the preseason and wasn't able to play. But you can see that instinctual player that Seattle sought after. You can see the physicality. You can see his instinct, his, you know, able to find the ball to also help with run support. You can see the, the physical nature that Seattle likes in their corner in him. And he's had his learning, you know, his learning curves, but he's sure. also impressed, you know, a lot, you know, playing and catching up to speed with missing out on preseason. You know, you throw a player like that into, you know, the fire and not having a lot of, you know, experience, you know, playing in the NFL with, you know, missing a lot of training camp and a lot of preseason. And he's able to just kind of like pick up and, you know, produce and play at a high level, which is extremely, it's extremely well to see knowing what you can have uh, in the future and what JSN is Seattle has not been able to just kind of notch out a role for him you know they haven't he hasn't really been able to separate and get the targets that you would think that he was going to because he he's a, a phenomenal slot receiver he plays you know, primarily in the slot, he can eat up those intermediate routes and get you, you know, all the sh all, all the routes in the middle of the field. You know, he can get all those, um, you know, five to ten yard routes and just kind of do that while DK and, and Tyler are stretching the field and, you know, going vertical. And they kind of really he kind of really hasn't been, you know, in this offense as much as even Seattle fans would like. And, you know, but he he has all the tools to be a great wide receiver. It's just trying to find him a role in this offense, which I know would be hard because you have 2,000 yard receivers on Absolutely. each side that are going to get a lot of targets, that are going to get a lot of looks, and you can't downplay Seattle's usage of tight ends. I mean, you still have a solid tight end in Noah Fant that can also stretch the field and go downfield. So you have so many players. So, yes, as much as we thought JSN would dig into the tight ends role, it hasn't really been that way, and we're still trying to see 
how JSN can fit in this offense. Yeah, no, definitely. And I can completely see that, you know, and it's that's something that I'm kind of notating as a Giants fan going into this game. You know, are they going to try to get JSN more involved? And uh, I think you bring up a good point. You know, when you look at Seattle's talent, especially on the offensive side of the ball, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, I mean, you can't go wrong with those players. Right. But then, you know, to me, you know, I, I see it as, OK. Is this going to be the game where, you know, they let JSN loose? You know, because I, I, I really do think that you look at Geno Smith as a quarterback, you know, despite you guys having offensive line issues, he gets the balls to his receivers. He's able to put up points in that offense. I don't see why. JSN can't be more involved in this offense. I mean, maybe you could tell me, uh, but, you know, I could absolutely see this be the game where JSN probably has his best performance of the year. You know, right now the Giants are struggling in the slot. You know, we have a Dory Jackson who in years prior was our outside corner uh, playing in the inside. Now we have two rookies on the outside playing at a stout level. Um, but, you know, JSN, I mean, you saw it in college. You know, this dude was a route running technician his separation is crazy and to me you know uh, it's only what four games into the year you know there's a lot more game left but I could really see this be the game where JSN gets a lot of touches and gets at least if not a lot of touches a lot of balls thrown to him Um, you know that kind of worries me as a fan because we've been having problems getting to the quarterback as uh, as of late, uh, and you know, Gino, I think is the guy, the uh, the type of quarterback that if you give him time, he's just going to take apart your secondary. Now, as a Giants fan. You know, I could kind of empathize with that because we want to see more of Jalen Hyatt, you know, have a more prominent role in this offense. And I think that going into this game, we will see more uh, Jalen Hyatt than what we've seen uh, so far this year. But um, I can definitely empathize with what you're saying, man. Um, I think Seattle, you guys have a defense that can be had. Don't get me wrong. I don't think they're anywhere near a bad defense, but I do think that they can be had. Um, But to me, I think, you know, the strength of that defense, you know, with that run defense that you guys have, I mean, you can make a team very one-dimensional. And, you know, knowing that the Giants are going to have Andrew Thomas in this game, you know, I'm kind of on high alert right now. I got to be honest with you. You know, this offensive line, it's a makeshift offensive line. There's some promise on the offensive line, but... You know, our quarterback is taking hits. Uh, You know, we had quite a few sacks given up against the 49ers. Um, You know, and I would like to see Daniel Jones in this offense really capitalize on that and try to air the ball out a lot more and try to get these guys open because the performance that he had against the 49ers was just asinine. It it, it was just, I can't see that, you know, happening, uh, you know, anymore. Uh, For me personally, 22 of what, 32, 137 yards, one interception. It was just a piss poor performance, but this is a team that the Giants should be able to compete with. The Seattles of the world, the Detroit Lions, they should be able to compete with them. Now, will they? Obviously, we'll see. But I got to ask you, though, you know, knowing that Jamal is going to play, it's looking like, how are you guys feeling about the defense, knowing that this is a makeshift offensive line? And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's looking like an offense that's has – it's really been slow. We haven't been getting off to as quick of a start as we had anticipated with the additions we had made. Are you seeing anything on this offense uh, for the Giants that kind of gets you excited as a Seahawks fan, knowing what the kind of defense that you guys have? Well, right now, what, what I'm excited for is – JS or not JS, I saw JSN on my mind. But when we were talking <laughs> about him, I wanted to start with this. When we're talking about JSN, you're talking about somebody who had wrist surgery right before the season started. So you gotta mm. wonder how much of that is getting in to his confidence level and affecting him on the field. So now um so with that being said, with defense Jamal Adams coming back is huge for that defense. He can provide a lot of pressure on the quarterback. He can blitz. Uh, He adds a lot of juice and energy on that defense that they need. Physicality, that's uh, one area that's huge for them getting back. You also have Tyreek Woolen coming back. You know, they're all... 
should have been all pro, but their cornerback that, you know, went to his Pro Bowl's rookie year, mm-hmm. um, you know, just big, explosive plays downfield that he can stop the, the speed that he has. You know, um, he can cover, you know, some of the speedier wide receivers that Seattle has not been able to contain when he was not on the field. So when I look at it in that aspect, you have, you know, your number five overall pick, you have Tyreek Woolen, you have your, you know, your corners, you have Jamal coming back so you can create pressure. That defensive line has been able to consistently get pressure on the quarterback and someone like Jamal can help that D line get pressure blitzing. And it also makes some, you know, for um, your, your defensive coordinator, you can have them come in and run different blitz packages through Jamal and just kind of have them around the box. And it opens up a lot of different things for that. Now they, I want to say just because, you know, your guys' offensive line might be makeshift doesn't mean that, you know, Seattle's defensive line is going to play any better because Carolina had some issues. Detroit had some issues and they were able to get home, but not as much as you would think. I mean, you gave Chen and Uosu a nice contract in off season and he has not been able to live up to that contract right now. Um, Daryl, I mean, you're talking about Daryl Taylor, Tenu Wosu, both had 10 sack seasons last year. And they, Daryl Taylor has none, and Tenu Wosu has one. You know, that's not getting consistent pressure on the quarterback. So what I'm looking at is definitely that, that piece of that defense has to be like Jamal. Jamal creates so much havoc being around and blitzing to get to the quarterback then maybe you know you can run some stunts some blitzes and get pressure on the quarterback and if i remember correct daniel jones completion percentage against pressure not very high so yeah. if you're a defense you have to create pressure because as what we've seen from seattle the lack of pressure has just led to us getting picked apart and, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if you can, you know, you can only cover for so long. So you Very have true. to get some you have to get some pressure on there. Um, so, you know, I'm looking, you know, for, you know, that front seven to, you know, step it up because they have to. Yeah. And, and listen, I, I got to be honest, you know, I, Jamal playing in this game, I think, is a big boost for that Seattle defense, which already shows a lot of promise. Uh, but for me, you know. I look at this as, you know, this offense for the Giants has to be able to take advantage of that secondary, you know, as well as that defensive line. Um, You know, I I really do expect Daniel Jones to be able to get the ball out a lot quicker in this game. He has to be more decisive with his throws. Um, And honestly, he just needs to be more accurate and take more shots downfield, but absolutely be more accurate. You know, I really want to see Darren Waller get more involved uh, in this game. Uh, I think that would be an excellent matchup. I'm very curious to see who's going to line up uh, on Darren Waller. Giants will be able to go against Julian Love, former New York Giant, for the first time. And, uh, you know, we really have to be able to capitalize on that secondary because if not, I mean, it's going to be a very tough game. You know, Saquon is a game, uh, a game time decision. I'm not expecting Saquon to play. And seeing that the run defense that Seattle has, you know, it does kind of worry me a little bit. But at the same time, you know, there's threats on this Giants offense that we just have not been able to utilize. Paris Campbell was a player that a lot of Giants fans, including myself, was pretty excited about signing. He's been a non-factor in this offense. He His yards after catch is horrible right now. He He's just not getting it done. Uh, you know, Jalen Hyatt has moments where he looks really good, but, you know, at the same time, there's times where Daniel Jones is missing him wide open. There's times where the offensive line isn't giving Daniel Jones enough time to even get to, uh, to Jalen Hyatt. But, 
this offense just has to overall get off quicker for me. And, um, you know, I look at that offensive line for Seattle. You know, it's it's pretty banged up. This Giants defensive line has to be able to capitalize on that. We haven't been able to get to the quarterback. You know, Dexter Lawrence is Dexter Lawrence playing at a very high level right now. But Leonard Williams, he's been a non-factor for us. Kayvon Thibodeau, outside of this past week against the 49ers, has been a non-factor for us. We're getting back Aziz Ojolari, which when he's on the field, he makes the rest of the defense look really good, but that's when he's on the field because he's dealing. he's been dealing with quite a few different health issues. So this Giants defense has to be able to put pressure, similar to what you're saying about you know your Seattle defense. This team has to be able to put pressure on Geno because if not – Geno's going to have all day to take apart this secondary. And this is a very, very young secondary. We're talking two corners. Our primary corners are rookies, you know, playing. They're going to be covering DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. I mean, you can go in there, Noah Fant. I mean, on top of that, we've been struggling with tackling. And I look at Kenneth Walker, who to me, I think is one of the better backs in the NFL. And then you look at, uh, you can you can correct me, I don't fully, fully remember his name. He's a second string running back that you guys have. Completely ran over a Panthers defender last week. And that, that worries Zach me. Zach Charbonnet. That, that, that worries me because we haven't been able to stop the run. We made some additions and we actually got a little bit better in that area, but our tackling has just been so poor, you know, and our linebackers aren't playing at a high enough level. And I look at what James Conner has been able to do to us from Arizona. And I say to myself, okay, you know, Kenneth Walker, James Conner, I think I could be wrong, but I kind of view them in the same level, though I think Kenneth Walker obviously has a higher ceiling. And James Conner ran all over us. And that worries me. <laughs> that that really does worry me because Kenneth Walker, I thought, had a solid performance against us last season. So, uh, you know, I think we're, this is going to be a very nice game, a very well-balanced game between two teams that have their own deficiencies. But um, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous. You know, Geno is an above-average quarterback playing at a high level. But, uh, you know, I worry about Jamal. I, I, Tariq, uh, Tariq Woolen, I mean, he seems to be the ball hawk that you guys really really needed and then you throw in your fifth overall pick and Devon Witherspoon yeah I mean if he could play at just that that level I think you guys have a top five maybe even a top four secondary for years to come um, so I gotta ask you are there any players in this uh, going into this game that you're really keeping an eye on that you are expecting to have a big game uh, going against this New York Giants team well yeah yeah yeah. Uh, one would be have to be, like you said, the running game. And so I, I wouldn't say one person, but I would say one one position group, the running game. Seattle has always prided itself on being able to run the ball, you know, throw play action, get big chunk plays down the field. And Ken Walker has been, you know, running the ball great. His change of pace is phenomenal. He ha- he's very patient at the line. And if a play breaks down when he's running right, he can flip it and go left. He's second most in uh, missed tackles in the league. And so he's been able to, you know, make people miss and get yards, turn plays from nothing into something. And then you add in Zach Charbonnet, who is that bruiser, that running back that can come in and when the hole is collapsed can get you, you know, two, three yards and not turn it into a negative play. That player that isn't going to go down after first contact, you know, he can keep those legs turning and get some more yards, as, as you alluded to. I mean, he threw a player into the oblivion. I mean, out of the screen you know and stood on his feet it's not like he fell down he just stood on his feet and just kept going um and so you know with that running game you know being able to control the time of possession control the line of scrimmage and be able to have that turn into play action and get down the field that Seattle loves, you know, that's a very, you know, that's one position group that I'm looking at and two are the corners seattle's corners has kind of been you know swiss cheese you know it's got holes you know like they they can't get consistency you know tyreek has missed a game and then trey brown has been like the surprise you know he took over for mike jack who was 
you know, as Pete said, had the best offseason of anybody. He came in and took the opposite corner position, had a pick six versus the Lions, and then got a concussion last week, so he's not going to be able to play this week. So then, you know, you have your corners that are supposed to be your young corners for years to come. This is their first time playing together. How are they going to play off each other? How is that secondary going to hold up? Because they have not been able to really hold up that long. And lastly would be... Tyler, if you remember, Tyler had a big game the last time we played you guys. He had did. he not had a drop, he would have had, you know, two touchdowns. Like two touchdowns. Yeah. yeah, two touchdowns, both on a Dory. Who, mm-hmm. You know, he was, you know, having a, a solid game because the thing is, is you have the monstrosity of DK on one side who gets a lot of, you know, the gets a lot of the looks. So then Tyler can, you know, do his thing. He can play it inside and out and he can stretch the field and go down so you know tyler is one of the as much as i love dk tyler is like uh the the factor because of his versatility be, to be able if jsn doesn't do much inside you can throw tyler inside and he can get some of the inside yardage and you can have like a jake bobo another bigger wide receiver on the outside and eat up some yards in the inside um he's more of that you know you tyler go get us some yards dk has actually impressed a lot in his route tree um but you know he is you know your down the field threat he's your x wide receiver versus tyler's more versatile so tyler getting and you know dk had a big game last week tyler had a quiet game and it's usually that you know when you have two different kinds of wide receivers but they both produce it's usually like okay what pro- what wide receiver is going to produce this week and like you said a dory playing out of position you know they can move if jsn if jsn isn't able to create anything they can move tyler inside so, yeah. and he can have that especially seeing what he was able to do to him the last time they played they can put him and try to utilize him the best they can to you know spread the ball around and get the ball out of the field because their offensive line having so much problem they are probably going to have to go with the up tempo you know fast offense get the ball out and Tyler Lockett's shiftiness is great for that. Yeah. So those would be absolutely. those would be my three. I mean, Tyler, the corners, and the running backs. Those would be my positions that I'm looking at here. I like that. And and look, I mean, I got to give a lot of credit to Pete Carroll. Uh, I mean, you guys have not only just weapons on that offense, but they're all weapons that can do different things. DK is his own beast. Tyler is his own beast. And then you throw in JSN, who I think as we see the years go on, can really mature into, I think, a top 10 wide receiver. I mean, I I really do. I think he has all of the capabilities plus coaching matters. And what better what better coaching staff would you want to go to other than Seattle, who has a history of coaching up their players to high levels? So, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, as a Giants fan, that does worry me a little bit. I mean, for me, I'm personally looking at couple people in this game first it's got to be daniel jones like i stated he has to have a better performance than what he had against the 49ers we saw him have an excellent if not what some people are calling a historic performance against the cardinals in the second half Uh, we need to see more of that we we have to be able to see more of that and to me you know if saquon is not going to play in this game this game is going to come down to daniel jones's arm you know, and again, you have the weapons to really stretch the field. You have a Darren Waller, who to me is a mismatch nightmare. You know, he just, you know, he's he's getting in stride right now. He's due for a breakout game. You have Jalen Hyatt, who has just elite speed, can really take the top off. You have Darius Slayton, who's having an excellent year, a complete burner. He's looked like he's improved in his route tree as well. Um, but for me, you know, how is Daniel Jones going to come back off of the performance that he had against the 49ers and he has to be better he has to be better he has to be more accurate I got to see more shots taken downfield I want to see him have more designed runs uh, because when he gets it done uh, with his uh, with his legs I really do feel like that helps him out in the passing game as well I think teams don't really respect I'm not going to say respect his legs because they do, but I don't think teams realize just how athletic Daniel Jones really is now for me 
knowing that Seattle's given up what I believe it's twenty seven points a game so far this season on mm-hmm. their defense. You have to be able to score on them. You, you, if if you can't score on this secondary, we're talking about a very long year for the Giants because this is a game where, listen, they're a respectable secondary. This is a respectable defense, but they're not the 49ers defense. They're not the Dallas Cowboys defense who, to me, those are two top three defenses in the entire NFL um, that you had to play within three weeks. So, uh, it's just for me, Daniel Jones has to be better. Then I'm also looking on the defensive side, Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon's had a pretty quiet year. He's looked slower. He hasn't looked like as juiced up as we saw him last year. And there's, you know, different things that factor into it. You know, some of it's schematics. Some of it, it looks like it's mental uh, because he has everything there. You know, he, he does show at times the burst that we saw last season. But, you know, one sack on the year, it's not really getting it done. He needs to step up and show, you know, why he was selected fifth overall. I'm not going to throw him in the bus conversation. That's not me. I don't think he is whatsoever. I think what he's going through right now is completely mental. And if it is, that can be fixed. Um, so how does Kayvon look going against an offensive line that has some deficiencies, especially at the tackle position? Uh, I'm keeping an eye out on that because with Aziz Ojolari coming back in the lineup, that's someone that when he's on his ball, opposing offenses really have to hone in on Aziz because he, he could take over a game. But Kayvon, you know, how are you going to look going against these backup offensive linemen? Because so far this season, he hasn't looked too good. Um, And lastly, you know, I just staying on the defense, this defense, this, excuse me, this defense has to be able to to attack better, has to be able to not only just get to Geno Smith, but they have to be able to tackle better. They have to be able to hit their gaps better. I want to see more of Isaiah Simmons. There's a reason why you traded for him. And, uh, you know, if this team does not tackle better, if this defense does not hone in and try to take advantage of Seattle's deficiencies, it's going to be a long game. It's going to be a very long game and things can get ugly very quick. So Kayvon, I'm going to put him in with the entire defense in that conversation. And Daniel Jones, those are things that I really want to see improve coming out, going into this game. You know, the last time the Giants played at home, it was a complete embarrassment. You know, the fans had to sit in the rain watching that. So hopefully, you know, the fans can cheer in the stands instead of having nearly mental breakdowns all across, watching them get beaten down by the Dallas Cowboys. Um, Last before we go, do you have any score predictions for this game? How, how are you feeling? You think Seattle's going to win? Uh, I'll say what I'm looking for, and then I'll say my prediction. What I'm looking for is definitely for Seattle to step up their defense because, like, like you alluded to, they had given up a lot of points primarily in the secondary. Seattle right now is a, a top 10 run defense. And yeah. they have been, you know, phenomenal against the run, especially with the turnover that they've had on that defensive line. You know, um, all new defensive tackles, you know, a couple new defensive ends. They bring in Draymond Jones from Denver. You know, they they paid him a lot of money. And to be able to stop the run and play the run as well as they did, I mean, the, the Hall of Famer Bobby Wagner coming back, you know, has definitely helped that. That secondary, though, you know, being banged up and playing so many people, hopefully having their star corners come in, play better, play better. The offense has ha- has just been humming lately, you know, and they have to be able to do that. I mean, this is an offense that has scored 30 plus points in back to back games and yeah. they're playing against a defense that has gave up almost 30 points a game all year. So you have to be able to continue that process in case your defense cannot step up it's just like you said if your defense does not step up your offense is you know has to put points on the board and if your offense don't put on points on your board you know your defense has not been playing at the level that it's been playing so yeah. for me i'm looking at seattle to you know just stay honed in on offense you know, keep that momentum that you've had going on, show why you have all these playmakers on offense. And but I don't think it's going to be something close. I mean, when we played Carolina, we had 
stalled out five times. We kicked five field goals. You know, we turned those into touchdowns. That's not a close game at the end. So Seattle needs to clean up some of those mistakes in the red zone where they usually are a great red zone team. So if they can clean up those mistakes, you're looking at a, a lot better game. But Seattle hasn't been able to show that they've done that. And Jason Myers has started his career or this season off in not the best fashion. You know, he's mm-hmm. missed more field goals this year than he did last year already after getting receiving a contract. So, you know, that's a that's an area of concern. But I'm looking at this offense going against a defense and this defense going against an offense, you know, that has not you know, the Giants offense has not been able to put a lot of points on the board. I think it's like 14 points an average um, per game, and this defense has given up 30. You need to tighten that up because you can't give 30 to an opponent because you are right. You know, the Giants, as much as they have been underperforming, are a good team. I mean, they went. you guys went to the playoffs last year, beat Minnesota in the playoffs. You guys are yeah. coming off of a stuff. So you can't come into this game thinking, oh, this game, this team is underperforming. You know, this is a cakewalk. No, I'm looking at more of like a 27, you know, 21 score, score here. You know, I don't think it's, you know, and Seattle, you know, has been playing teams close. You know, do I think this is a game that Seattle win, can win? Yes. But I don't think it's going to be something that they can go in and they can't afford it because right now you guys are playing I don't know if this is too much to say as a must win game but this is definitely a win game that you guys have to get because of the people that are in your division and it's a game that Seattle needs to win with the Rams you know playing better than anyone thought they were the Niners being undefeated you have to stay true to that so it's a game that they both play but you've seen Seattle play a team and the Rams week one that had nothing to lose and, you know, had to play well to win that game and they underperformed. So Seattle can't afford to do that. They need to stay on the gas pedal, not take their foot off and play. But my score prediction would be 27, 21 Seattle. Yeah, I mean, and I think you made some solid points there, man. And uh, something you said, which, you know, I'm going to kind of echo and piggyback off of is, This is a must win for the Giants. The Giants have to win this game. We can't afford to lose this game. You know, you have Buffalo and Miami coming up literally right after this game on a short week. Uh, this is this is an absolute must win. The Giants can't afford to lose this game, especially in prime time. We, we, We just we can't. And, you know. I I really need to see this team play better, you know, in both facets, in all facets. You know, our special teams has been really horrible this year. Our offense is not getting off to the quick start that we anticipated this season. Our defense, we have yet to get an interception this year. We had one and it got called back, so we have yet to get an interception this season. You know, we have to be able to draw pressure on Geno Smith. We have to be able to tackle better and stop Kenneth Walker from running on us like Prime Barry Sanders. Uh, we have to. We, we have. We we really really have to. The talent is there, and it's up to these players, you know, to really step up their game because there's always so much that these coaches can do. You know, it's really down to these players. And uh, again, this is a team that you should be able to compete with. Whereas Dallas, if the 49ers are the cream of the crop in the entire conference for the NFC. You know, this is a team that you should be able to compete with. And uh, I'm hoping that the Giants can. Um, I'm be- I'm in the same boat with you. Um, you know, I think this is going to be a pretty close game. I think the Giants actually come away with this win. Um, I, I have the game fairly similar to you. I have it at 28-21. Um, you know, but at the same time, if this team can't, capitalize on Seattle's deficiencies and where they have them. I mean, this could be a very ugly game for the Giants. I mean, I'm going to just be honest with you. We were down the first half to the Arizona Cardinals. So, you know, this could be a very ugly game if things don't get fixed up. I do believe that they will, but this is an absolute must win. And I think we'll see this team play with more anticipation, uh, excuse me, more intensity, you know, and uh, hopefully we can get off the ball quicker. But 28-21 is what I have. Hopefully I'm right this time because I was absolutely wrong the last time. Uh, But listen, man, I appreciate you stopping by. It's always a great time chopping it up with you. Uh, You guys can find the Hawks Nest 206 podcast. Again, 
their YouTube description, uh, excuse me, their YouTube channel, as well as their Twitter will be in the description box below. My man, before we head out, you got anything else you want to say? Uh, yeah, uh, I will say this about Seattle. They have a sneaky, good offense, okay? I, I, I read this today. Seattle is actually top four in points scored per game. Wow. And that's in there with the Cowboys and the Niners. So, no, we don't have the same defense as them, but we are good with them. So, this is another thing of their offense. Other than that, you know, we have any Seahawks fans, you know, like you said, my description is below, Hawks Nest 206 podcast. You can come look at us on YouTube. Um, same same name, Instagram, and Twitter. And I had a blast, man. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. We appreciate you guys stopping by. Hopefully the Giants pull this off. We will definitely see. Uh, but appreciate you guys stopping by. See you guys on the next video. And as always, go Big Blue.